one of the first things that James Webb's Space Telescope has discovered, or the data from that, the telescope hasn't made any discoveries itself. It's not smart enough. But what the data from the telescope has shown us is there are a lot of bright, noisy gas. There we go. I've been following this on the archive and people are publishing straight off, even within the first two weeks of this data being available because they were pretty much ready to go. And as of last night, there were 20 galaxies with a Z more than seven that have been discovered. And this galaxy is one of the most extraordinary, which is carefully measured, uh, which as they say is GHC3. Two. Well, what about surface brightness? Well, let's map it out. So using the observations in the papers that have been published just in these last two weeks, I have plotted out the Hubble results that Ricardo and Renato and I had developed from the Hubble Space Telescope, which are these dots at less than 5z in each of these diagrams and compared them with the new data from JWST. And if you look at the radius, so this is the radius assuming that we were in a non-expanding universe and that redshift scales as distance. What we see is that the range of galaxy radii is very comparable. Now these are cut off the only very bright galaxies because obviously the brighter the galaxies, the bigger it is. So these are galaxies that in astronomers speak have absolute luminosities uh, brighter than minus 20. And take it from, from me, I look, there is no correlation. There is no tendency for these galaxies to be larger, and there is no tendency for the surface brightness to grow. There's a bit of an apparent slope, but that is purely apparent. We aren't observing the galaxies that at this distance would be in this section because they would be galaxies that would be less than 10 kiloparsecs in radius. Most of them would be unresolved even by uh, JWST. We will be able to see them because they'll stand out that their spectra will tell us they're not stars, they're galaxies. And we'll be able to fill in this blank. But even with this data, we can see the prediction of the surface brightness is valid out to a redshift of, you know, approximately 12. There's one that's even reported out to 16. If we assume the Big Bang hypothesis, we get a very different picture. We get a picture that the surface brightness continues to increase to wholly unphysical levels. Again, this is the surface brightness, assuming that we have to put in this correction for this optical illusion, which would not exist if the universe were not expanded. So it's a, it's a double negative as it were. The red line is the brightest galaxies in the local universe. So these are the galaxies that have the brightest surface galaxy of any we can see nearby. Unfortunately, astronomers again have this, this habit of making magnitudes smaller, meaning brightness is bigger. So as we go down, we're getting brighter and brighter. And this super galaxy down here is hundreds of times the surface brightness of any galaxy in our local universe. So look, let's look at that uh, super galaxy. I call it a mighty mouse galaxy because it would be extremely bright, far brighter than our Milky Way galaxy, but extremely tiny, very much like mighty mouse. So let's compare this galaxy, GHZ2, with the Big Bang theory on the right and no Big Bang on the left. 
If no Big Bang, this is a pretty typical, very bright, very star forming galaxy. Six kiloparsecs in radius. It's a little smaller, but not much smaller than the Milky Way. Very luminous with a surface brightness near but below the brightest ones that we see. So it's within the range of the brightest ones we see nearby. And the volume brightness, so the luminosity per unit volume is again within the range we see. Well, if we take the Big Bang Mighty Mouse assumptions, this galaxy is hundreds of times smaller in radius than our Milky Way galaxy has approximately the same luminosity, either assumption. So very luminous, a tiny volume, hundreds of times the surface brightness of any galaxy we see around us, and thousands of times the volume brightness. Well, how would such a mighty mouse grow into a regular galaxy? Well, the story is just exactly like you take a super toy truck. Now this is a super toy truck because even though it's only an inch across, it has the same mass as a great big F1, uh, uh, F-150, uh, you know, pickup truck. Same mass, 100 times smaller. How does it grow? Well, the traffic accidents. So traffic accidents occur between these super toy cars and somehow they sort of get smeared out to a great big pickup truck. Well, you would expect a few dents and that's why we get the panic because SWST, as, uh, <clears throat> JWST can look back and look at galaxies far away at high Z where they should be undergoing many, many mergers because they're quite tiny according to the Big Bang. And why is there panic at the disk? Because what does JWST, this is a very much blown up section of that iconic uh, image Mr. Biden showed to everybody. What we see is very beautiful, smooth disk galaxies. And if we blow it up a little further, we can see, wow, a tiny, very nice spiral galaxy. And you see the little spiral arms. Little only from the Big Bang. Actually, this galaxy is just the same size as the galaxies today. So the reason that this caused panic, or the authors expected it to produce panic in others, was that Almost all of the galaxies look like this. And what did the authors say? There were 10 times more disk galaxies, and that's another word for spiral galaxies, than we had thought. 10 times as many as they had thought, not we. This implies disk galaxies have existed in large numbers for quite a significant amount of time, quite an understatement. They have remained the same morphology, which obviously couldn't happen if they were colliding all the time. This would challenge our ideas about mergers being a very common process. In other words, in astronomer understeep, it would obliterate that hypothesis. So that's why we've got a big problem just in the first two weeks for a Big Bang hypothesis because you've got these little tiny galaxies, even littler, even tinier, with no ability to collide together because at all redshifts, they're nice, smooth, highly structured, but obviously non-colliding galaxies. And the get galaxies that do collide, the peculiar galaxies, are a small minority. So that's big problem number one. But I'm sorry, I skipped over. Big problem number two, a bonus problem, is 
they see elliptical galaxies. Now you can tell the difference between elliptical and spiral galaxies, not only by their, the shape of their light profiles, it's very distinct, but also by their spectrum. Elliptical galaxies are obviously older. They're bright, young, hot, blue stars have burned out. So you have more red stars. They are redder in color. Well, here's a galaxy ID 3602 at z equals nine. The big bang age of the universe is supposed to be 540 mega years, but the spectrum is very red. So it goes up and the observed spectrum is the red line. They fit it with this blue model, which would tell the modeled age of that galaxy, but the authors don't share it. And the reason is, that I suspect that they don't share it, is that they don't wanna say, this galaxy is older than the Big Bang. But if we look at models of a billion year old galaxy, the blue line, it's a reasonably good fit. And even a 13 billion years old galaxy, is not a bad fit. A 500 million years old galaxy uh, is a bad fit and would be ruled out by this data. So in this galaxy, and it turns out in a couple of galaxies that were reported just yesterday, the age as reported by the stellar spectra is older than the age of the universe. So again, complete impossibility, if uh, complete contradiction with the Big Bang. So in four weeks, four, in two weeks, four contradictions, surface brightness and radius are constant, the impossible Mighty Mouse galaxy, no mergers to grow the Mighty Mice galaxies, and an elliptical galaxy, in fact, three, older than the Big Bang. My conclusion, which I published 30 years ago, is that the Big Bang never happened. So let's break here again and talk about these results from the uh, James Webb Telescope. Accelerating Advanced Fusion Energy.